Thanks, Jürgen. Hello, everyone. My name is Fahim Khan, and it's a pleasure to meet with you digitally and to continue our discussions around digital transformation and specifically the role that reality capture technology plays today. In Jürgen's keynote, we've looked at macroeconomic trends that's impacting this world. We've looked at technology that's driving change. And we've also looked at the value that digital twins bring to various industries. To continue that discussion, I'd like to give you an overview. And I always like to use this example as an overview because I find this to be quite an illuminating example highlighting where our journey started. Our journey, at least from a field acquisition perspective, started with a device that wasn't the most portable in today's standard, but it was a technology that demonstrated the value proposition of reality capture technology. A technology that is now in use in numerous industries, from public safety to building construction, to surveying, to heritage preservation, and many more. What was once a proof of concept is now a fundamental work process in many industries. The productivity gains and the technology improvements that we've witnessed over the years had allowed organizations like SEPSA, the owner operator of this facility that you see, to keep their digital twins constantly updated through a continuous flow of reality data um, on a constant basis. What you see is a 3D model created using software technologies from a sister organization, Hexagon PPM, and reality capture data coming from a technology powered by Leica Geosystems. With reality capture technology, organizations like SEPSA are able to keep their brownfield facilities evergreen. To support this constant fusion of design with reality, users turn to a number of complementary technologies to view and paint the world in 3D. Be it from mobile, from airborne, or terrestrial platforms, while you stand, you walk, or you drive, users leverage field-to-finish workflows that cover the entire capture-to-complete spectrum. And making this process automated, simple, and efficient are some of the driving forces behind our drive for innovation. To take a deeper look into the solutions landscape, we will dive into the phases of reality capture. Let's start with phase one, the capture phase. Now, naturally, capture uh, involves the use of sensor products. But in order to make our senses shine, we've developed sensor-specific software that's multi-platform capable to support decision-making at the right time and at the right place. Leveraging technologies such as edge computing, users can check, for instance, completeness of the work and accuracy of information that they've captured before they even leave the site. In fact, the work is done during the time of capture with the speed enhancement that we've introduced. They can append additional information. They can link the physical world with the, with the information-rich world, such as with facilities management system and asset management platform. Now, to enable collaboration, users are also able to share information straight from the field via the cloud and connect multiple sites and teams that may be geographically uh, in different places, but working on the same single source of truth. And again, at the same time, using multiple devices and platform. Now, to enable not just domain experts, but everyone to harness the value of reality capture technology, We've also invested in automating workflows in every step of the process. In the case of Cyclone Fieldworks, we enable customers to produce geo-reference data within five minutes. With a single push of a button, the single push of a button triggers a scan, a data import, a data target extraction, a pattern match, and essentially all of these multiple string processes automated such that you can get a geo-reference accurate point cloud at the time and activity that, match, uh, that matters. In the case of tunneling, users are able to validate um, the compliance of the design versus um, the as-is condition and to compare, um, to see whether there is access in terms of um, construction material that's used, whether there's wastage in, 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 in construction material and whether there's a, a out of compliance situation. 
The goal essentially is to enable you to capture and complete your deliverables in the field, eliminating the need for a trip back to the office and executing activities where and when they matter. Now, while we strive for simplicity, in reality, life is more complicated than a single push of a button. In fact, this, what you see, is a typical reality capture landscape. Different formats, different standards, different experiences. All of these things take productivity out of your day. Uh, we're in some ways participant in this because we have created some of the, the legacy formats that you've seen. We've also taken the step forward to try and um, uh, offer a new platform, a new technology, the LGS format, which essentially harnesses all of the content that we've captured, all of the information that's added into our authoring package, a format that you publish once and you can use in all of our downstream applications. To start with, the LGS format is not just a point cloud, but it contains things like registration report, 3D models, HDR information, geotags, uh, infrared information if you're using the BLK360, metadata around projects and setups, and much, much more. It's much more than a point cloud. Uh, the LGS also enables digital interoperability across a number of design packages without import. Users are able to access LGS file reality data in Revit, Navisworks, MicroStation, BricsCAD, and many, many more. In fact, all major applications are supported. We've also recently introduced a number of new platforms and new connectivity, such as SolidWorks, PointFuse, Rhythm, and so on all of them powered by technologies called Jetstream and essentially in enabling you to have further productivity in your production workflows. Now, we earlier said that it was possible to capture and complete in the field, but for many projects, processing is a fundamental step. You may need to process to combine data from multiple teams from multiple days. You may need to process to clean and validate data. You may also need to fuse data from different senses. This is where users turn to Cyclone registration software, where you can combine data from multiple sensors, for instance, data from high accuracy terrestrial laser scans of the interior, uh, data coming from our mobile mapping platform, which gives you uh, high productivity uh, data capture at road speeds uh, of um, drivable areas, uh, or using UAV, which gives, gives you a perspective that is very hard to read using conventional method. Now, moving into an, uh, an optional phase three, the phase, this phase really depends on the type of organization that you're in and the type of projects and the scale of projects that you undertake. Now, if you do have large projects uh, with multiple users accessing the projects, the scenario of an owner, owner operator commissioning a project that they capture themselves or maybe they outsource and then sharing this data with various disciplines, working on the project is not uncommon. It is also not uncommon that the disciplines that are working um, themselves may want to coordinate uh, information exchange and have to do this coordination by sending files across, uh, across the borders. Now, if you want to keep changes in track, it becomes very difficult because the changes are not essentially maintained and honored in this file-based system. In fact, there's no notion of change in the file. Now, if you make a change in the file, maybe you have a registration issue. You can imagine the complication that it generates uh, and the knock-on effect it has to the entire organization because everyone is working now on a different source of truth. So what we, what we try to do to manage the situation is to remove the physical access to a file-based system. And we introduce a technology platform called Jetstream, which eliminates the need for you to pass files and hard drives around the world. Instead of files, you pass to your users a username and password. And it's through this username and password uh, which allows them and enables them to access um, to the single source of truth at the time and based on the permissions that you've assigned. So a way to manage collaboration and to enable uh, uh, deliverable production in a more appropriate and efficient way. Now, to move on to the next and final phase of this uh, workflow, we look at um, the, the solution delivery that Reality Capture um, uh, supports. Um, we will look at three specific examples and starting with TrueView, with, which is a photorealistic representation of reality captured and produced directly from the field. With TrueView, users can take measurements, create red lines, collaborate, 
or add intelligence to the data. This intelligence can be added in the field or back in the office. In this example, we see how, without the need of a 3D model, users can connect asset maintenance information to assets in the real world. To further improve the process, we have active R&D initiatives that further automates uh, the tagging exercise by leveraging machine learning to determine patterns, we're able to create schematic models and essentially tag these assets automatically. I will encourage you to watch this space as we execute our own internal digital transformation initiatives and, and we have more um, innovation to, to bring to, to bear. Uh, to continue the solution journey, we we'll look at how professional CAD users, in this example, a Revit user, is able to leverage reality capture projects and data instantaneously through the LGS format without the need for conversion or data loss. Just to put things in perspective, this conversion typically takes a day, uh, and that day is saved with this technology that's leveraged. With the LGS file, um, you can work with shared coordinate systems, shared project scopes. BIM specialists can also turn to productivity tools built into the heart of the product to slice and, and, slice and dice the data and generate 2D or 3D products through semi-automated workflows. They leverage not just a point cloud, but also imagery, including thermal imagery, which again, from a BIM process perspective, is of immeasurable value. Uh, in 2020, we've made it a focus to add new, robust, automated extraction tools to continue the productivity drive. Using the tools that you use in the um, third and final example, you can see how users turn to not just uh, Revit, but also to Cyclone 3DR to conduct rapid inspection of models against point cloud. This inspection of reality against um, uh, model is done using three simple steps. Step one, open the LGS file. Step two, open the associated design model. Step three, align the data sources if it's needed and then execute an inspection on the data that's highlighted. What you then see, very similar to how the automotive industries have leveraged technology, is a part of a building that's ready for inspection. You can produce this inspection report in a 3D PDF that everyone can open, or you can simply share the project with, uh, with end users who can then leverage this information to extract additional uh, value from, from the data. Uh, our goal in our solution journey is to continue to help you extract more um, deliverables and ultimately more profitability. Now, a fantastic way to look at um, how all of this comes together is to really look at what you, our customers, are doing with our technology. Now, it gives me great pride to introduce Port Coast, a forward-looking organization that is driving digital transformation both internally uh, and all the industries they serve. Let's watch the next video. It's constructed uh, for the purpose to import and export the liquids, gas, and uh, they decide to make the new factory to contain and refine the liquids, gas. Because this is the new port, so every five years they have to do the verification and inspection to check the condition of the port as the requirement of the government. So later on, with the new technology of laser scanning, we can compare what is the difference between five years? Laser scanning is not a new uh, technology on the world, but it's very new in Vietnam. When we do the scanning for the Hillsong project, we always have problem with the, the narrow area between the pipeline, and sometimes they have to go underground. So it's quite complicated area, and with the capability of combining the station, the Leica RTC360 and the Leica BLK360 help us a lot in developing the 3D point cloud model for the Hillsong project. Based on the scope of work, we use 3D laser scanner uh, combined with uh, several software to checking the displacement of the pyrex, the pipeline system, and also the revetment. Based on the point cloud data, using the 3D software, we make the contour line and also the cross section at the different station of the revetment. And based on this data, we combine with the design one. The difference between the real scanned data and the design drawing will be used to determine the displacement of the revetment. 
After the data is collected from the field from the Leica laser scanner, we post processing the data using the Leica cyclone and the results will be the 3D point cloud model. And the 3D point cloud model will be handed over to the employer as the base to develop the next step, the 3D modeling and the B model. Looking ahead, 2020 has proven to us that the world has changed. As professionals in our own respective fields, we are in a prime position to harness the power of digital technologies that help inform our industries and enable transformation. Doing less with more, eliminating rework, and executing in a smart and safer way will only position us for growth. With this, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us in this session and to learn more about some of the technologies and techniques in detail. Please join my colleagues in the Reality Capture Experience Zone throughout the day. If you have questions, please also feel free to type into the chat box and we will address them at the end of the session. With this, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Nathan Wallace, who will be covering peer surveying solutions for digital transformation. Over to you, Nathan.